In the previous video, we looked at creating simple zone based firewall policies. In this video, we will extend it to configure intrusion prevention system on Cisco SD WAN devices. The first step in configuring IPS is to download the virtual image and upload it to vManage. You can download the image from software.cisco.com. I have already downloaded the image and uploaded to vManage. The second step is to enable IPS signature updates under the vManage settings. Here you can provide your Cisco credentials to authenticate and provide the frequency at which it should check and download the updates. By default it is at 2 hours. Now let's configure the IPS policy. Let's go to configuration and security. Let's add our security policy. Let's click custom. We're not going to add any firewall policy. Let's click next. Here, let's add our IPS policy. Let's give it a name. Let's choose a signature set. We have three options to choose from. Connectivity provides the least restrictions, while security provides the highest level of restrictions. Let's choose security. You can also choose either the detection mode or protection mode. Let's choose protection. You can also whitelist signatures either by creating or importing them. And let's change the alert level to info. Let's add our target LAN side VPNs, which needs to be subjected to the IPS rules. Let's save a policy. So that's our IPS policy. So let's click next. We don't need any URL filtering policy for now. No DNS security policies. So let's assemble a policy here. I also have an external syslog server, so let me send my syslog to this that server. Let's preview a policy. So that's the configuration that will get pushed. So let's save a policy. And that's our policy. Now the policy has not been applied to any template. So to attach this policy, we'll have to edit the template attached to the device. So let's go to templates. So I have a template attached to CH test one device. So let's edit the template. Let's go to additional templates. And here choose a security policy which we just created. I'm going to choose the default container profile for the installation of IPS. Let's click update. Let's check our configuration. So these are the configurations that will get pushed to the device. So this is the container configuration which will bring up the IPS. And then it will also push the policy that you have actually created. So let's configure our devices. This is now scheduled. This is because this is the first time we are installing IPS and it will install the IOX container on which the IPS will run. Once the container gets installed, the policies and the configurations are pushed. Let's look at the syslog server. And here you can see that it begins installation of the container. Uh, it installs the container, it updates the signature sets, brings up all the required connections that is required for the container from the device. 
so let's go back to a dashboard and the scheduled tasks and under the scheduled tasks we will see that the container was installed and the signatures were updated now i have a pc connected behind this vh let me log into the pc So let me open some legitimate sites. So let's me open rediff.com. That's working. Let me open gmail.com. Let's open a couple more. Let's try yahoo.com. And let's try amazon.com. Now, all these sites are legitimate, they seem to work. Now, let's go ahead and try to browse any uh, suspicious sites. So, let me open dfgvx.com, and you can see this is just trying to open the site let me go back to my syslog and here you will see that i have a syslog which basically is dropping the site because it it classifies it as a malicious site the ips detects that it is a malicious site and it blocks it let's open another site talk to no wall.com and you can see that it also gets blocked and you can see that it's actually is blocked as a Unix Trojan. Let's go back to the dashboard. In the dashboard, you can view those events. So let me expand that. You can see the signature hits, IPS signature hits. You can also go back to the device. Let's go to a device. Let's go to intrusion prevention. And let's check for the last one hour. And you'll see the signature hits. And it also shows which IP signatures were triggered and the count of signature hits. Thus, you can see how simple and easy it is to add IPS and enhance the security of your branch devices with Cisco SD-WAN. That's it for this demo. Thanks for watching.